Welcome to Short Pivotal, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion. This poetry discussion comes to us from Charles Bukowski in The People Look Like Flowers at Last. Um, I've got new videos on the channel, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mondays are for poetry, but I also have new videos on my personal channel, a link to which can be found in the description below. Uh, and that stuff's all different, all different stuff. This poem is called It Was an Underwood. It reads as such. My poems keep renouncing each other. This one says this, and that one says that, and the other says something else. But I find it humorous as they battle back and forth, angry featherweights, well, maybe welterweights. And then I walk into a stationery store after all that furious battle, look at the typewriter ribbons, and can't remember the name of the machine. Even my typewriter renounces itself. Pardon me, I squeeze by the girl at the register. They didn't have what I wanted. Then I walk across the way where I buy six of those brews that made Milwaukee famous. So uh, here's the thing. The message here about my poems keep renouncing each other. This one says this, that one says that. Um, even this poem in and of itself, it's titled, It Was an Underwood. And then it says, well, I can't remember what my typewriter was. The typewriter was an Underwood. Not only that, Bukowski says in this poem, I didn't remember what I came here for. And then he tells the girl at the register, they didn't have what I wanted. This is life, right? Uh, we are confounded. We are confounding. We are contradictory. We say something and then go back on it. We are compulsive. We are impulsive. We are all of these things and everything in between. And um, someone, so Bukowski reportedly, purportedly, Bukowski supposedly wrote a poem every day. You read some of these poems and you realize, oh, well, that's why he had to get one out. This one happened. Um, but it is, where was it going with that? Bukowski supposedly wrote a poem every day. Every day, every day. Which is a hell of a thing to encapsulate your entire day in a poem. To crystallize it. To distill your day. Um, to make, to make uh, evaporated milk out of your day. Every day. Every day. Think about that. Being your nightcap. Well, Bukowski had literal nightcaps. But uh, had nightcaps in the middle of the day. Had nightcaps for breakfast. But that nightcap, imagine doing that for 50 years right? A poem. What, what was today? I have to write a poem from today. What happened today? Um, you know, there was this, this, this thing, fuckery, you know, and uh, what did that mean? Where did that go? Uh, where's the irony in that? Where's the irony in this? What comment can I make on it? Of course, his poems, how does he put it? Um, battle back and forth. Of course they renounce each other. We renounce ourselves every day. Not every thought that we have uh, coincides with the very next one which will pop out of our brain. Um, and this is beautiful because it adds to the grandiose nature of life. But it also adds to the unpredictability of life. Where it leads to trouble is when someone tries to take something as gospel. That is why art is important, more important uh, than propaganda. I've gotten on this kick a lot lately, talking about art versus propaganda and the like, but here's the thing. One, okay, so for me personally, I have often said that I would rather be an agent of change than a force for good. Why? Because what's good will often change. So what is good in your day and age will not be good in the next epoch. But a, an agent of change will always cause change. And change normally leads towards the better. Not, nah, okay, maybe, maybe that's idyllic. Change normally leads towards the better. Maybe it doesn't. But you have a better chance of ending up at something good when change is happening than when it is not. Um, so these changes that we go through every day... <clears throat> This ability of the human to be contradictory, 
to be hypocritical. Uh, we're all hypocrites. Like I was saying, where this leads to trouble is where someone tries to take Bukowski's word as gold. When someone tries to take Hemingway's word as gold. What did they really mean in that poem? What did Hemingway really mean with that short story? That's why art is important, because art is open to interpretation versus propaganda, which is written for a, a specific cause. Propaganda written for a specific meaning. Then it has to be taken as gold. Versus allowing the reader the tools to say, okay, well, I think this is ironic. I think this was meant with irony. I think that this was meant literally. Versus, I think this was meant literally, and I think this was meant ironically. Um, but when we have those tools in our own head to flip those meanings back and forth, it forces us to make the decision ourselves. It forces us to um, examine the mechanism upon which that switch can be made. And when we have to do that, not only do we have to entertain each one is good and each one is bad, but we have to entertain what it means to be on the opposite side of these things. This is one of the great humanizing forces of literature. Um, when Mark Twain writes inward Jim. That is a character that we are meant to like. So when the character is referred to in that fashion, we the audience are meant to understand. So back at the time, those phrases would have been commonplace. So anyone reading that book would have used a phrase like that probably at some point. When Jim is a character that we like, that we know, that we have counted on in this story, and that phrase is put out there, we have to understand what that feels like from this end. This is the way that literature humanizes. This is the way that literature breaks down barriers. This is the way uh, that people look so stupid when they argue for When they argue for shutting down language, when they argue for removing things from texts, when they argue against the fact that things can be employed ironically, this is dastardly. And it's one of the ways that, honestly, and I'm not trying to sound uh, end of world here, it's one of the ways that civilizations die. Losing the ability to look at things with humor, losing the ability to look at things ironically, self-censoring, whenever thought policing, all of these different things are just little bits and pieces of the way that civilizations crumble. Um, art is one of the great tools of the human species of humankind. When art is degraded, when art is relegated to propaganda, to being written in order to be interpreted as communication, we lose a lot because we don't lose the ability to think that way, some of us. We don't lose the ability to read and interpret that way if we've learned it. But to someone who, but for someone to whom all literature is propaganda and all literature, all art is propaganda, all art is made with a correct interpretation, to someone who doesn't understand that that's not the case, any bit of of direction becomes more difficult to question. Any bit of direction becomes more difficult to question, no matter from whom that direction comes. To someone who has that ability to read ironically, has that ability to read counterintuitively, and is then told, you must not do this, an irreparable derision arises. 
someone who understands that form of thinking and is told you cannot use that form of thinking, if you're the person who understands that form of thinking and is told, no, you can't do it, that bond is forever broken. That person will never look at you with trust or admiration or even respect ever again. So in today's world, all of these people um, enforcing self-censorship, they're constantly weaning the herd towards lesser capability. But not only that, they are enforcing the fact that there's a great deal of people who will never look at you seriously again. Um, I don't know how I got here with this poetry discussion. This is not where I had planned to go. I didn't take any notes on this. I just kind of sat down, read this poem, got this thought, and went with it. Um, but that is all I have for this poetry discussion. I have new videos on the channel Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays are for poetry. I also have new videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on my personal channel. If you like this sort of thing, hitting that like button really helps me out here on the channel. And I hope to see you back next time for another video. Maybe I won't go off on this wild man tangent.